Hello once again, everyone. So, the video where I went over the purposes of posture in Raytheon was quite a hit, and since I was trying to work on doing more uh, backsword content as well, I decided why not cover it. So, I'm going to be going over the kind of three main positions, as it were, that you see throughout the use of the backsword, at least within the British tradition of it. Obviously, Backswords back 1 are kind of a universal sword, as are basket-hilted swords, at least across Europe. So you'll see other postures, etc., other methodologies, but these are kind of the main ones we see within the British tradition. So what I'm going over here, the posture isn't so much going to change. I'm not going to be necessarily hinging forward and backward, but we will talk about that. Instead, we're going to see a lot more use of, instead, my stance, mostly from the waist down. So let's go ahead and start off with the more familiar one, the one most people will have seen, which is the regimental style posture. So this is going to be, my feet should be relatively in line, and as my torso that is turned relatively square, right? I've got my outside, my inside, my hanging. Now this one is most familiar to those that want to do other kinds of saber work, so you know, Hutton, um, maybe the Italian saberist, as well as modern sports saber. It's a pretty good all-around position, and I mostly fight out of it, right? Heels relatively in line means that I have very, very good mobility. I'm going to be able to power out quite the lunge and extend beyond my normal reach. So, for example, with my lead toe on the line here, I don't want to necessarily do my full lunge. So my full lunge, as you may have seen when I was attacking with the rapier, would be all the way out here. That's much too deep for uh, this style of fighting. Not that I couldn't, and certainly I will on occasion, especially if I really know I can get the hit and they're on the retreat, so they are leaving and I'm taking a parting shot. Instead, it's normally going to be about one shoe length, though I can afford to get just a little bit more because I've got that leg primed and ready to reload thanks to my balanced posture. Now, in regards to general movement, it's mostly linear. However, I can still traverse quite easily with this. I just mostly focus on making it small little offline steps with the idea that I am keeping that left leg loaded every time I move offline, right? These are mostly for cutting the angle. If someone is trying to circle on me, I'm always just keeping that guy underneath. Very good way to start to learn defense. Excellent for general movement, etc. Also very apt for slipping. So if at any time someone tries to cut from my leg, I am literally just one bend of knee away from standing straight up and then launching back into my attack. So that's kind of the basic, as it were. If I attack from my offside, so throwing a two cut, nothing really changes. In fact, sometimes you'll even see it advocated to fight directly out of the medium guard. So that would be kind of a capoeira approach, but for uh, backsword. Staying mostly here and using this sort of deceptive movement and deceptive parries to protect myself. Very centralized, very optimized, a very good way to fight. Now, if we move instead to its opposite, well, opposite, it's kind of the middle ground. Let's, let's go instead for its kin. We look at the more wide, older style um, broadsword. Now, to get this, start in your normal regimental posture. We'll go ahead and take medium guard. And we're going to take our shoe length out, and we're going to square up significantly more. This is not dissimilar from a longsword posture, um, at least in regards to general stance, except rather than having my left foot forward, I have my right foot forward. Now you'll see two forms of this. You have the hand on the stomach for the outside guard, and then you have a much more linear stance for the inside guard. Hand on the stomach for the broad, and pretty much anything on this side, you've got the hand held back. Basically the idea is you've got things applied to middle, things applied out. Now, some general actions that can lead into this would be if I'm launching my attack, I'm not going to pass forward necessarily, but it's kind of like a little, a little crossways pass almost. Kind of, I'm going along this line, but I will also at the same time get a little bit of extension. So rather than just stepping over, I'm also going to push off of my back foot to get just a little bit of extra. And I can also then move into the inside guard just fine, right? It is my habit to roll to the outside, so apologies. But play, and I'm back into it. Or alternatively, if I want to throw a two cut, I can step out with my back foot. Now for this, the thing you want to watch out for is don't end up passing forward. If you have a shield, you're fine. 
But in general, for this at least, I want to focus on I'm cutting angle. I'm getting lateral step to then return back onto this new line or to step back in place. So one, two, or alternatively, one, two, where I'm now gaining ground moving in a traversal circle. You can also somewhat use a lunge in this regard. Every once in a while you may go ahead and do a pass, but with the express purpose of then moving beyond that, so boom, boom, or pulling back off of it. You can also use the traversal for a lot of exiting styles of hits. So for example, if we go off a little bit of Ferdinand, I can parry, hit, then traverse out to get a lot of lateral movement. So kind of passing step-ish, kind of not. And the idea behind this sort of movement is, again, you're now adding your hip turn into these attacks, right? But you still have your leg loaded and ready to assist with the lunge. I don't want to entirely forego the lunge and just get stuck fighting this way. Even though it is quite effective and very powerful, that extension really does switch things up. So the way I like to think about it is just like I was doing with my more medium regimental, is I'm using the power of my traverse in both my guards and my attacks, but I can also at any point fire that shot off, especially if I'm in the inside guard, wherein I have wonderful thrusts as well as very deceptive cuts that I can fire. But either way, that's going to be the old style. Now, and my dear everyone does it a little bit differently, but that's the way I was taught. Now, when it comes to our next dance, we're going to look at Raworth and other sort of uh, sources, where we're going to be having more of a, as well as more single stick stuff, we're going to have a bit more of a withdrawn stance. So for this, once again, we're going to go ahead and go into our medium guard, but now I'm going to lean back and charge my left leg. I still keep myself extended and erect, so I'm not doing any like hinge work. In fact, I don't want to. I just pull myself back, and since I'm going ahead and going back weighted, I go ahead and bring my arm up for balance. So you don't necessarily have to, it could still absolutely stay on the hip, but the images we see now have the hand held up, and the basket is going to be a little bit more relaxed. So rather than me taking my hard angles or my wide angles like I was before, we have slightly more centralized and a little bit more relaxed since I am so far back. Now this position is very, very good for a couple things. One, it's a very safe position to fight from, but two, it's very good for holding your ground. Basically what this allows me to do, if anyone tries to cut at my leg, it is very, very easy for me to withdraw. In fact, I can withdraw without even moving the rest of me, as I have done before. But the other thing about it is because I'm so far back, I don't have to necessarily slip all that much. If someone attacks in, it's very easy for me to parry, and then because I'm back weighted, I can work within this distance a little better. If I'm more in the regimental position and someone cuts into cheek, it's usually very good for me to do a slip with it, or alternatively, I will want to parry, wait for them to retreat, then attack with my lunge, or rather wait for them to recover. Since I'm back weighted, people tend to lunge out just a little bit more to try and get me. It's very easy for me to work within that distance, a bit like a shorter fighter going up against a taller fighter, because I've made sort of a funnel web spider, as it were, cut a trap for them, right? Now, the other nice thing about this guard is that from here, with my attacks, they're very small, right? I'm very relaxed as I launch these attacks, and I'm just making small little shoe length lunges. I can power more forward since I've got all that stuff weighted, but I don't really need to, right? I can still be mobile with this, but in general it's going to be nice and relaxed, nice and back weighted. This is also very good in case someone is trying to target your head a lot of the time, as not only can you guard very, very safely, but you will also be able to literally lean out of the way, as uh, you do see not only in single stick, but also in a couple instances in Ferdinand. Now, let's talk a little bit about how you can also modify some of the guards we're more familiar with. So, the regimental. Nice and turned out to the side. Old style, much more loaded and out to the side. More reserved, kind of more in the middle, just kind of tilted off to the side since I'm so far back. When it comes to the inside guard, regimental, again, pretty standard, exactly where I would want to be. Old style, pretty much the same on the blade work, but now we've got more interior sort of leaning, more withdrawn, again, very relaxed, just kind of the basket kicked off to the side. The hanging guard is really where these things can really change. 
regimental, nice and poised, right? Sometimes a little more centralized, and I can play to a couple different directions, but right about here. Old style, basically like Bogan, right? It is a strong position meant to be not only attacked from, but moved through um, as you attack. For withdrawn, I can have two versions. I can have this very, very extended guard, very single stick-like, and basically deny that entire area, though it is taxing on your arm. Or also, I find a more withdrawn sort of inside hanging guard to be quite good, as if they try to go for the arm, it's very simple for me to protect since I'm nice and far away. I also have a heck of a slip behind it, but I can also cover this whole line very naturally. Though you will also see this taken with old style and regimental, but I tend to find that it works really, really well with the withdrawn posture. And all I'm doing is just taking my normal hanging guard, moving it over to cover my inside line. But, and then for the medium guard, best use here, I find old style doesn't really have one, though you will occasionally see just straight up extended. And then for here, it would be again here or here. But, all that is to say, just some fun different options. You should move through all of them, depending upon what you're doing and what you're focusing on. If you know that you need to do a lot of lateral movement, like honestly when I'm fighting bayonet or fighting against shields, you bet I'm traversing like old style because I need it. If I'm fighting against a weapon system I'm unfamiliar with, I prefer to stick to regimental as it's just the simpler all around kind of all rounder. If I am a more relaxed person who's more taking their time, um, or alternatively I'm trying to kind of, I'm trying to suss out what my opponent is doing. Um, in fact, usually when I'm sparring with newer students, I do like to take the more reserved, as it's safer, and I can take my time and really pick my shots with it. At least that's what I find. Try them all, do them all. They're all fantastic. Find the one that works for you, and then blend the other two anyway. But either way, the real purpose of this video, apart from cool backstory content, is really just to talk about how just moving your foot around and a little bit of weight change without necessarily doing anything to your shoulder can alter your stances rather significantly. So if rapier was all about, is my guard going forward? Is my guard in place or am I reserved? This is now all about what kind of energy am I looking for? Lateral, forward, or reserved, and what I can do with it. But either way, that's going to be the video. Hopefully people enjoy it. Thank you very, very much for watching. We'll go over some other techniques another time.